Hello, welcome to Grim 3D. Yeah, I did it. I bought a monster. So uh, one of the things I've been interested in doing lately is printing bigger pieces. And both of my printers, both of my Monoprice Maker Select and my Prusa are fairly small beds. I mean, they're not the smallest. I mean, they're, I guess, medium sized, but I really wanted to print things that were larger, something in the, you know, 500 millimeter range. So I did a bunch of research, checked out a lot of websites, you know, looked in a lot of forums and, you know, inspected a lot of stats and decided that I would get myself a Wanhao Duplicator 9 500 Mark II. Now the Mark II has a lot of features that the Mark I didn't have and I thought that was probably going to be, you know, a good deal and that I would have, and that I would have like easy setup and easy printing and easy everything. But it hasn't been easy. In fact, it's been a monster. I've had this thing set up for about a week now. It's been printing pretty much continuously. But this is what I've been getting. This is supposed to be a Benchy. Check that out. So anyways, I've been tweaking, I've been rearranging, I've been reformatting, I've been trying new things, new ideas, new tests, figuring stuff out in which, you know, I've, I've gotten a little bit better. I've gotten a little bit farther forward, but this is my most recent Benchy. It's not bad. It's not fantastic, but it's not bad. So let's talk about that. So the original Benchy, this was, I just loaded some filament in the machine and this is what I got. Benchy number one, massive layer shift, spaghetti, had to stop it. Okay, so then I learned online that the D9 has a problem with its firmware where you go through the whole leveling procedure and it does, you know, 57 points across the bed, however many it does, it takes forever. Okay, but then when you use standard Cura start G code to home the bed, it actually does a home function that erases or removes the bed leveling information from memory. So then you have to remove the G28 code that homes the bed and removes that information from the memory, the bed leveling information from the memory. And then you replace it with just a raw G28 code. But after that code, you have to stick in there an M420 code. So the M420 code is actually supposed to tell the printer to reinitialize all of that, those memory checkpoints from the bed leveling. And then things should be fine because with such a large bed, you can't expect everything to be perfectly flat. So the automatic bed leveling is kind of a big deal. And this particular printer does it with BL Touch, which is my first BL Touch printer. And it seems to work okay. It's, you know, does its thing, but for some reason, I still haven't solved this problem. I went through the whole procedure to level the bed and set the Z offset. But then for some reason, the printer just rams the print head down into the bed anyway. Like it totally forgets its Z offset. I'm not sure whether it's even remembering the information from the auto bed leveling, but I know it is not remembering the information from the live Z adjust that happens through the bed leveling procedure. Now, if I adjust the live Z as a print starts, so I get a nice, decent layer as it goes around the skirt, okay, and then I confirm that on the touch screen, then it remembers that one for the next print. 
but the auto bed leveling live z adjusted does not remember so i don't know if it's remembering the auto bed leveling points or not so more research to figure out there after i added the m420 g code to the cura's startup g code to hopefully what i was told online was to reinitialize those bed leveling points that bed leveling memory i printed another benchy so here's benchy number two pretty much the same i got a little bit taller than bet than benchy number one but not much So I tweaked a couple of other things that I didn't really write down, but it wasn't very significant anyways. But I got Benchy number three here. And what I noticed on Benchy number three was that I had a ton, let's see if it focus on that. I had a ton of like really stringy, real heavy extrusions. So I figured maybe this layer shift was being caused by the head ramming into kind of a weird or off kilter extrusion. So the next thing that I did in my, my effort to tame the beast is I set my extrusion multiplier to 80% or 0.8 in Cura. I just, by, I just didn't even let it extrude 100%. I also at this time started messing with my jerk and my acceleration settings because one thing I started to notice as it was printing this Benchy is that I could hear a popping. I didn't know where it was coming from yet, but I could hear this popping. So with my extrusion multiplier set for 80%, I printed another Benchy, Benchy number four. And here's what I got for Benchy number four. So this one at least finished the Benchy. I didn't have to stop it. But as you can tell, it's not fantastic, even though it finished. Massive layer shift. And I thought, man, I wonder if that's like normal. I, I mean. I wonder if, if it would do the same thing exactly twice, or if, if this is a G-code problem, or if it's a mechanical problem, or a failure, what kind of failure it is. So I decided to print another Benchy without changing anything. And there's Benchy number five. So Benchy number five, same layer shift, almost identical in every way to Benchy number four. So I don't even know what it meant, but I got some extra information, so I thought, I still gotta change something. Something's not working here, something's not working. And I hope that my monster printer is not really like broken from the factory or bad from the factory. So then what I noticed is that my printer was only popping when the bed was moving. Now the, <clears throat> the D9500 has a massive print bed. It's huge, it's like 23 inches by 23 inches. Okay, and it's pretty heavy. So I thought, well, maybe that motor's having trouble with acceleration or reversing direction or, you know, some kind of jerk or something like that. So I went into Cura, I found out in Cura that there are many, many jerk and acceleration settings. There's quite a few in there, some for infill, some for perimeters, there's move jerk, there's all kinds of stuff in there. So I went through and I found all of the jerk settings that I could find by just going to Cura and searching for jerk in the, in the search window and searching for acceleration as well in the search window. And I set all of the acceleration and all of the jerk down to minimal settings. Okay, I found and reduced them. I think my jerk I put on two and my acceleration I put on 500 millimeters per second, which originally I think the jerk was on 20 and the acceleration was on 5,000 millimeters per second. So I cut it way, way down printed another Benchy, still at 80% extrusion. So Benchy number six, da-da, success. I have now controlled the layer shift. I also found out at this time, the layer shift that I was getting on this Benchy was in fact a Y-axis layer shift. Okay, I found out that it was my Y-axis motor I got the acceleration and the jerk set really, really low, which slows the printer down quite a bit, but that's kind of what I needed to set up this Benji. So this is still at 80% extrusion, so it's fairly under extruded. So I thought, well, I'll print, I'll take it up to 90% extrusion. So here's Benji number nine, 90% extrusion. 
Um, it's pretty nice. Uh, it doesn't have really decent, really good surface quality, but I figured I'd work that out later. So there's Benchy number seven. So then last in my Benchy series of tests with the monster, I took it all the way back up to 100% flow on the extrusion. And I actually set the travel, I turned the travel speed down as well because it's just traveling too fast. It was shaking my whole table. So anyways, here is Benchy number eight. 100% extrusion. I still have some pretty rough edges here to work out. I don't know if that's just the printer or if that's the filament. I'm not sure where we're going yet with that, but there is Benchy number eight. So not a bad Benchy, not a fantastic Benchy. I haven't cleaned this up at all or messed with it one bit off the bed. So there it is, Benchy number eight. So, so far it's been a pretty decent learning experience and if anybody out there has a D9, especially a 500, and you've learned, you know, how to make it nicer, make that, get rid of those surface striations and get rid of the, all of the, you know, whatever anomalies and just make it print straight and clean. I am right now printing a temperature tower, even as we speak, which will be coming up in the next video. I also printed an XY direction surface test that I actually um, can see whether or not the X or the Y is worse because I'm concerned that, that maybe the guide wheels aren't round or there's something wrong with that there or they're not going straight or the printer just isn't moving right. And then I'm also gonna do some other filament tests. Maybe this printer likes different types of filament. I've got a few different makes of filament in house. At this point, I'm just sticking with PLA. I'm just trying to figure this printer out and make it work as good as it can from the start with its own equipment. And then in future videos, I will be doing upgrades to this printer. I really did buy it with the idea of upgrading it in mind. So not a big deal for me. I've spent a lot of time upgrading and I do a lot of that kind of manufacturing stuff. But there you have it. I bought a monster. I'm hoping to tame the beast. Well, that's it for this episode of Grim 3D. Subscribe if you would like. Please leave us a comment, especially if you have information about the Wanhao D9. Just remember to keep it civil. Smash that like button, ring the bell, and we'll see you out there.